Okay, welcome to the Investing with IBD podcast, everyone. It's Justin Nielsen, your host, and Arusha Pierce. He's going to be joining us a little bit later, as he usually does, uh, my my partner in crime. But joining me right now, we've got Leif Soreda. He is a U.S. investing champion from 2019, and also wow. he um, has a championship trading team that he's uh, kind of building up, and uh, really interesting stuff, a lot of great swing trading lessons. Uh, so, hey, welcome to the show, Leif. Hey, Justin, thanks so much for having me, uh, you and Arusha. I should be interviewing both of you, but it's fun. I'm going to try to bring the heat. We're going to see what we can do. We've got some uh, uh, interesting things happening in the market, and I'm excited to talk about it with you guys. So, Yeah, it's, it's, been, a, it's been an interesting year, really, and um, a yeah. lot to kind of cover and, and, and unpack with what's been going on between, again, inflation, recession, debt ceiling now, um, you know, and, and just kind of getting out of the, right. the 2022 bear market doldrums. But uh, where would you like to start? Do you want to start with the NASDAQ to kind of get an overall picture? Yeah, um, I mean, and, I'm better talking over charts and going over the lessons. You know, this right. year, it's a lot like 2019. I kind of went up against a lot of good swing traders that are doing rather well now, uh, uh -huh. you know, in, in, a, in the U.S. investing championship. Uh, this is a real money contest and, and, and you try to whoever makes the most money, the best percentage return wins. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a similar year. It's just very difficult, thin, and then you just have your your small runs. And I, I guess we wanted to do a theme for this. So uh, I think we're going to call this careful concentration because we're going to uh, show how I sort of got into some semiconductor stocks. And we just had NVIDIA report. So the ones I still have there are going to probably benefit from that. Right. And maybe some of that move was getting ahead of that. And, you know, some of the money was uh, realizing this and going into semiconductors early. And um, and they weren't just uh, one or two patterns here. They're all sort of setting up together. Mm -hmm. A lot of people buy patterns, uh, you, you know, one in a group that's setting a cup and handle. That might not be very meaningful because it's just waiting for some confirmation. Uh, if, if you're waiting for earnings or maybe the earnings of another company or something to happen and, and not necessarily always supply and demand, but when the supply and demand, for the entire group, uh, the, 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 dem the demand is starts outstripping the supply and supply is running out. And that's what I was seeing with, uh, semiconductors. Mm -hmm. And th then they all started moving out. Is it, there's no, there's not that, that many left to buy. So, mm -hmm. and that's sort of what I want to show versus, uh, just looking at one pattern by itself and not considering the group. Yeah, and you kind of want to buy when it's difficult right now because it's choppy. And the semiconductors were sort of forgotten about a few weeks ago, as the SMH sort of slid the moving averages and then kind of popped back up. So, mm -hmm. so so taking a step back, you know, certainly the Nasdaq Composite has been the um, the index to watch lately. And um, you know, we're uh, yeah, you know, if if we take a look at that, um, you know, we had a really strong move at the end of last week, and then we nearly gave it all up uh you know so uh, it, right. it was kind of like a breakout that we had um yeah. we were clearing right. those 2023 highs yeah um yeah. what do you think of it now well it's still a very very thin market a lot of the it's just a, f a few stocks holding a lot of this up but the pattern is right for the nasdaq so i mean if you look at the queues um you know it's a lot of the same you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're consolidating you're breaking out and you're throwing back it's always it's never just going to go straight up you do get those runs and this is sort of where I, I think I shorted Apple back there. Actually, Let me take a match that to where I shorted Apple. If you see my screen, there's a yeah sort of frozen rope idea. I actually shorted there, and uh, then you had this nice move down here, and then you know it's just sort of consolidating and, and maybe ready to to start moving now that Nvidia is going and all these other ones. But then the other things that are concerning, you know, small caps can't really get going. We had a nice little run, and I you know we had all kinds of stocks moving. Um, but they didn't all hold. So, we, you know, we're, we're, we're taking a look and throwing back a lot of them, you know, you're, you're going fishing and see how much you can, you know, take out of the water or whatever. Right. And then, it, you know, see what you have to throw back. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, we have the NYSC. You want to show this one. So this is the, uh, New York, uh, New York composite. And yeah, again, so a very different look from the NASDAQ. I mean, cause yeah. you look at the NYC composite and this is, this is obviously in a downtrend. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, lower yeah. lower highs, lower lows. Um, you know, RS line is terrible, and you almost have a little looking. head and shoulders look to it on the consolidation there, and on the weekly, you have, you know, you can see that a little bit. 
And, uh, you know, if this, this gets reversed and negates that, that'd be a good thing. And overall, the base is okay. So it could go either way. Uh, we're we're going to have to see. Uh, it's, it's just very thin, but we're starting to see, you know, these kind of uh, uh, stocks move from stage one to stage two. Growth stocks, growth versus value. Growth is kind of outperforming value uh, mm-hmm. so far this year, but it's sort of uh, not many stocks are setting up. And I sort of use um, the, the Minervini trend count idea. The, the trend template, I have my own sort of version of that, which looks at the faster moving stocks mm-hmm. in, in that, uh, you know, you want your average daily range. So the range of it over maybe 20 days of you want the stock moving kind of 2% or more, and then keep a count of that and you see what you could actually trade and how many of those there actually are. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we had about 311 or so a couple of days ago, dropped down to like 250 very quickly with this kind of action here. So, yeah. it, you know, it, it makes it difficult. You get um, one I had to throw back. I mean, right away was Uber, you know, bought mm-hmm. this, sold some and just threw it back and might re-enter. just, you know, let the 21 catch up. We'll see what that does. But um, you got to be a lot quicker in this market. Otherwise, you're just going to give everything back and you get those those two risk multiples. You probably want to take some off. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I just want to probably just get into the SMH idea here. This is. Uh, you know, you're sort of having uh, this potential head and shoulders, and then it kind of bounces out there, sort of consolidation. It's not the top in pattern, it's sort of sideways action there. Uh, mm-hmm. And this is where everybody's out. And then this is kind of low volume drift in it. And all these patterns we're setting up. So, uh, you know, I suppose the, the careful concentration idea is, you know, I actually bought some of this personally here coming out as sort of a long term buy because um, I want to get sized up in it. And then you have LRCX. Well- well, now, now with something like this, though, okay, so it had a, a, a nice kind of move, and you immediately got confirmation that, yes, yeah. this is this is working, this is going, and right. then the last few days, uh, you know, kind of kind of a, uh, a big, a big give back. So how are you handling stuff like that? Are you just selling into the strength? Are you are you still holding on through some of this? Or how do you manage that kind of position when you get we're, we're selling some into strength for sure. Well, I'll just skip back to some Shopify is one I bought here. And I bought this uh, very, very tight in there coming out of this little pullback. Mm-hmm. And I got two R and I sold two risk multiples on my trade. So I sold some into strength. Then you have the option to take it off even when everything falls apart, then I'm out. Mm-hmm. So I'm rather quick, quicker than I want to be. And, and maybe describe those uh, those risk multiples that you're talking about when you're... Uh... So you, you bet a dollar, let's say, and then it gets out $2. That's where I'm taking the profit scale. It could be, depending on the signal, 25%, a third, mm-hmm. half, whatever you want to do. Uh, in, in this environment, the more... The more you sell, the quicker you sell, the more you're going to profit rather because it's just every the throwback rate is incredible. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't experienced something like this since 20, 2019, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here, the thing about 2021 was, uh, and, and you could ask Samir, he was he's uh, one of my members and we, we uh, trade on the platform at championteamtrading.com. He mm-hmm. was uh, saying he was mostly short and I was doing a lot of shorts. I was doing M- MGM short. I don't know, remember where I was short, but sort of reverse earnings pivot. I think it fell apart on earnings. I don't remember exactly where, but um, somewhere in here and then mm-hmm. it covered down there or something and not the, at the very bottom, but some of it in earnings, I think. Um, and those were the best moves, but this is, uh, I prefer shorting the bigger names in, like Apple or something like that. But but this year, all the all the big mega caps are doing great. So yeah. I don't have anything to short. This is the problem. I'd rather... You know, you want to sleep at night. I don't want to put a big short on some company that could easily be bought. I want to short Apple. And that's like why I showed one of those shorts from Apple that was a while back. And since then, all those have been pretty good. So do you ever do shorting of the indexes? Oh, sure. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, um, you know, XLB is my current uh, short idea, right? This is the one. Uh, this this looked like a short in here. And of course, they don't let it happen. They bounce it out. Market looks good. You know, mm-hmm. ARK Invest is up 3% on this, back up in this range, right? On Monday, it was 3.8% mm-hmm. on ARK Invest. Mm-hmm. So that's when you start buying the junky stuff, buy Riot or something like that. You know, I was trying Riot even. Um, you see, I bought that in there. You get one risk multiple, and then you're out even again. And it's just, 
you know, quicker, quicker the dead, uh, you know, quick in the dead. Like, I think there's a movie. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but I think this was called. <laughs> yeah. What, what, was that Sharon Stone? I think. Maybe. I think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah. um, and Leo and Leo is, you know, so I think we're about the same age now. So. <laughs> um, and, and so with this, with this narrowness that we've been seeing, and again, uh, very, very different pictures, you know, uh, we, we looked yeah. at the NASDAQ first, then the NYSE composite. Um, so are you just focusing all your attention on where the strength is, or are you sometimes looking at, you know, some of these weaker stocks and looking for bounces in, in like the NY, NYC, uh, or, or, you know, so, some of those weaker areas. With, with the NASDAQ getting extended, you kind of shift and say, okay, well, let me see if the strength will come into these other areas. I mean, that's one way to that? play it. That, that's a riskier play, in my opinion. They're, when the group is oversold, then the stocks start setting up or the one or two lone wolves start setting up. You're playing the bounce on it. Uh, in this environment, you, you don't know where the bounce is. But yeah, you wait for a pullback, see what's setting up. And when, when everybody doesn't want to buy them, like the SMH, uh, I, think I, I think I tried this somewhere, somewhere back in here. And I eventually threw back out even, you know, and then we're back, I'm back in this one again, but playing the, playing the stocks that are setting up, you know, this sets up, right? So mm -hmm. you guys had this on swing trade or two or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, I mean, just as you said, we were taking profits. Uh, yeah. we, we took our first profit very quickly, right. took our second third off, uh, and then we, we just got out of it, uh, yeah. as it, as it started pulling back in. Yeah. But so I saw the last half today and I was, I don't know where I was selling somewhere like that. You're mm -hmm. just selling into that. So, so that was the first one. And to get carefully concentrated, you want to get a, a big percentage of your portfolio and where the money's going. So then the, the next one, um, was ABGO and the mega caps. This is what I want to, I think mm -hmm. Arusha's on. Let's go on mm -hmm. Arusha. <laughs> <laughs> So you see AVGO, we, we got this thing going down sideways drift to the right. And I love when David Ryan comes on your show. He yeah. says that down drift to the right. And he just simplifies it so much. I'm a huge fan of his mm -hmm. uh, in, in this this turn here. Um, you know, it's it's risky, but I risked 1.7% given the SMH's move. I would think it's pretty hard to knock that down when this is kind of pumping out there, right? Mm -hmm. So you have that, you know, in other stocks in the group, um, supplies running out. It's not just really by itself, um, similar related stocks rather. And then, then you go from this one and, uh, you know, down to half position up here. And now they have the Apple news uh, up there. Right. At least they got a big deal with Apple. Mm -hmm. So I'm riding a half position. Uh, we'll see if it's worth adding to. I mean, I don't add to something that's extended. And the pullback buy would be too steep. So I'd probably be stopped out if it went back to even, but you know, you get five R on something risk multiples mm -hmm. on something like that. Uh, then move on to the, the next one. I when ACLS went a little riskier, you know, you get this kind of a down drift flush on earnings. I think this is earnings here. So never mind my marking there mm -hmm. and, um, you're really slipping the prior high there. Cause you got to get, make sure it's kind of coming out there. Would have rather bought it right off the 50, but it just got a little extended there for the stop somewhere down there. And mm -hmm. sold the, sold seventy five percent of it uh, into that. So, you know, trying to trying to keep a, a positive equity curve. And you know, then the last one you buy is always you're always worried it's the laggard. And this is the one I bought last, and it's obviously the closest to getting stopped even. Right. But you know, instantly selling some into strength and uh, moving the stop to even. And with the Nvidia news, maybe it's just maybe that's its own pullback buy, right? And just add to it coming out there. So. Mm -hmm. And how long would you say that you're you're holding things in this environment and in terms of days, weeks? Um... You know, something like two weeks or something. You know, it's, it's been really difficult. I mean, I'm, I'm a trend follower at heart. I mean, I really want to buy this and let it trend and, you know, go from to the next base. You really I really just want to target the next base, move on to the next stock, you know, mm -hmm. let yeah. it base out. Uh, I think I was going over Celsius today. That's something to, um, you know, somebody's asking about this. You know, this just needs a whole nother base. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's areas that we, we targeted as a, a high tight flag here. And it's the next base. You know, you kind of sell into that, let it base and rebuy, right? And then it's, yeah. you know, sell into this and then let, let this base. And, you know, this is a really deep base. I kind of avoided this whole thing. Uh, this was tough up here. So this, this was nothing to get involved with for me. But uh, mm -hmm. it's just when it makes these big moves, you can always get back on. So we're, we're taking pieces of it. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's really what I'm trying to say is, we're going to try to get the move, the, the bulk of the move and not worry if we kind of miss out a little bit. 
Um, in this environment, most of, most of the time it throws back and the, the throwback rate is very high. So, yeah. And by the throwback rate, you mean the things that are coming right back into yeah, right back where you bought even, them or, you know, yeah, yeah, where you, where you round trip, you know, mm -hmm. round tripping, you know, DKNG is one it's already right. gone back to even, mm -hmm. uh, I think I bought it a little lower than my circle. It's trying to buy this. And this is uh, for some reason, my most popular tweet. I, I said, this is a three line strike as if there's some kind of magic to it and there definitely is and it's just sort of a a bullish kicker but then you got you know way out there so i sold some of that and uh I, I took off a piece back at even because i still think it's got a chance and you know see if this can go sideways and maybe add it back but i i still like this one mm -hmm. um but it really just should have been in nvidia the whole time <laughs> yeah, yeah right As, <laughs> yeah. especially after uh it's well i mean we'll see what happens uh uh yeah. tomorrow at the open but certainly in the aftermarket uh the earnings are you know looking looking pretty strong i mean oh geez it's even up even more last time i looked yeah. it, it was, i, I uh, suspect it'll be up in the morning so i think this yeah. will be you know that would have been a good play uh i had this on watch uh in here and then mm -hmm. here and this is a little a little short stroke type one there that I, I don't really buy those typically, but the institutional support for this along the way, you have all this up volume and yeah. it's very, very tight. Um, this is what I call low tight flag. It's the play on O'Neill's high tight flag. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not trying to invent things or whatever. I'm just an observer, but I want to call it, call it something you prefer in a leader. You got, you know, 60% or more in uh, uh, eight weeks or less. And then it mm -hmm. makes a rather, rather tight area here. So this is your, sort of low tight flag zone. And, um, you know, in a leader, I think that's good. The, the, the problem I had with it is it was a quick shot back to highs up here. Yeah. Uh, versus, you know, so you're sort of maybe need, in need of a handle. Uh, but, you know, there, there's money to be made in, uh, if you're lucky in that one. So mm -hmm. well, let's take a break. Be, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, let's take a break real quick. Um, when we come back, we'll have Arusha join us and we'll also get a little bit more into uh, some of the principles of this this concentration, um, careful concentration that you use, um, and also some of these other uh, bases that you uh, talk about and, and, and patterns. So stay tuned. Hey, trader, with inflation, interest rates, and the recent banking crisis, are you nervous about what's coming in the stock market? If you're ready to take control of your trading and forecast trends instead of reacting to them, then Vantage Point's artificial intelligence is for you. Did you know Vantage Point's AI predicted the trends of all the collapsing banks weeks in advance? Visit www.freestockcoaching.com to learn how you can predict trends with up to 87.4% proven accuracy. Visit www.freestockcoaching.com. That's www.freestockcoaching.com. Welcome back to the Investing with IBD podcast. It's Justin Nielsen here. And guess who joined us? It's Arusha Pires. So he's going to be here for our second segment. Arusha, of course, joins me every week. He's one of the portfolio managers over at O'Neill Global Advisors. Uh, how you doing, Arusha? I'm doing well. I'm very excited Leif is on. I apologize to Leif for missing the first segment here, but uh, you, you you caught the tail end. You caught you caught the juicy I did. stuff. So I did. It was great. um yeah, so of course our our special guest this week is Leif Sereda. He is um a 2019 US investing champion, also the founder of Champion Team Trading. Um so let's let's get right into it. Kind of you you really touched on this in the first segment, this idea of careful concentration. And uh yeah. it certainly seems like the chips have been one area to to do that and you know Look, we don't know what's going to happen when this when this actually comes out with Nvidia, yeah. but right now in the aftermarket, Nvidia earnings are you know they're 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 going up quite a bit. So it looks like up uh, you know we closed at three hundred five. It's trading at around three eighty five now, so up about twenty six percent. That's probably going to be bringing up a lot of the the chips, but you know Nvidia is certainly in the mega cap. You know things that have been working that very narrow pile. Yeah. Um, and you've been talking a lot about how quick you've been taking your profits. At what point do you feel like we're going to start getting to the, oh, you know what? It's worth it's worth holding on to these for a little bit more because, I mean, NVIDIA has had, you know, quite a move um, and it just keeps on going. So when when do you know, hey, I'm going to I'm going to hold on to something for the bigger gain as opposed to these quicker, shorter term moves? Right. Well, Pretty much, it's, we're going to keep the same playbook, taking those quicker profits, and you, they can always be quicker. And you know, I just, I just had a DKNG out, I don't know, ten percent or something, and I didn't sell at all. I regret that. So, 
Mm -hmm. uh, whichever way you have the case of regrets, keep playing it that way. So <laughs> I wish I sold it faster this way. Okay, so it, it hasn't changed yet. Uh, NVIDIA is pretty much the only one. You know, ELF is one. I do have a case of the regrets of this one. I tried to buy this in here and I stopped for like 2% and then this thing ripped. So, you know, but that's the, the one or two leaders. And this one's doing great after hours oh, too. 14%, so 14%, unbelievable. Right, yeah. so ELF. But they're not all perfect. I think snow I just saw go by is uh, yeah, got down, crushed oh, down, wow. yeah. down here somewhere. And this one's uh, part of the, uh, you know, stage one to two uh, transition uh, group, right? There's a lot of these transitioning, all the old software names. We'll see if these can start going from one to two. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, once they start trending and stop throwing back, uh, you know, it's uh, too many throwbacks. The throwbacks are... are everywhere and uh, just maybe i'll just jump into melly off the top of my head we, we're talking about this one uh, yeah this so is this also, is kind of the yeah. idea of this is one that you've you've played a number of times so you keep on going yeah. back to it and and what what's the reason behind that well if you see the the chart here first of all the earnings uh I mean, it's got a good base and you know it, it looks like it's transitioning you know you're stage four or one and maybe it's going into two so now that the trend is starting to look okay so I want to play an earnings pivot and I, and I trade on earnings a lot uh, after earnings. So I don't gamble into earnings. I see a, a beat and raise uh, and then I'll buy it. So this one specifically was trading about 1200 in the aftermarket uh, on earnings. And, you know, this is pretty much your standard, you know, you could say this is the cup and then this is a little mini handle here, right? So mm -hmm. I like to fish the low in a handle and uh, pull back, buy it over some prior high. And on earnings, it's meaningful. It's not just a random uh, takeout, you know, like something like right there, right? Um, if you can zoom in, if you're if you're watching this on the on the treadmill, you're not going to see this on your phone. But the <laughs> idea is, I'm I'm fishing the low in this uh, uh, handle to the overall cup, and as I'm taking out a prior high, I, I see the excitement at 1,200, and then it it pulled in, and then you kind of uh, based a little bit during the day. And intraday uh, bases are important too. A lot of people don't get into that. I could do a whole a segment on that where um, if you're up 3% on the day to your buy point and then you're buying it, you're, you're in a straight up, uh, it could work, but your, your odds aren't as good as if you're kind of basing around your buy point and it kind of breaks out like your normal base, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so but, like, let's get, let's yeah. first get into like this earnings pivot. Are you, so are you, are you buying within the, so, so you have the earnings day, you have that earnings bar. Are you buying right. within like the next day you're buying within it? No, or, I'm buying it. So earnings were overnight. So it opened, okay. it opened, uh, I, I think it came straight in and then it turned back through the prior high. That's where I'm buying this. So the and day I'm, after the, the, the so same on, day, on the, oh, actually the earnings day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so earnings came out, it opened and earnings yeah. were out. So it opened higher. I think it opened higher and then, okay. and then came, came in, fill the gap and then, and then, and then came inside the prior bar and then I bought it when it turned out there. Okay. And, and it went, took out. When the highs of the prior I took out the prior high, so that's my technical Got buy okay. Uh, okay. method there. Uh, and, and then I'm selling into this. I'm selling into strength, and then yep. my signal changes. It throws back. Uh, I think I'm out somewhere like there, and then I'm buying this next turn because I'm trying to get involved with this stock because I yeah. think it's holding up now. And then I'm selling into this, and uh, it was trimming down into earnings. And this earnings pivot. This was earnings over here also. Yep. Right. Open higher and blasted straight through it, so there's nothing to do. And then the, the last piece, I think my stop was something like there on the last of it, but still still profitable and you know trying to sell some up, up in this range uh, before sizing down into uh, get a double inside day after. So I'm out again and then double inside day turn. Uh, I'm back in. I'm selling some into that and then throw back, you know, your, your option to stop even. Uh, and then I'm looking for maybe <laughs> another turn. So this is just, you know, the, constantly trying to make sure. I don't ride something down to the 200 day. I have to get out, right? This is where you, you can't slim down there. Is it, you know, all the can slim traders are out. Uh, so, you know, including myself, I'm out a little earlier, but um, you know, that's, that's a tough one there. So it, that, that so just are kind you, of are shows you, the, go ahead. Oh no. Well, are you taking a look at the characters of stock too? Cause th this yeah. has always been kind of a choppier stock versus some others that might be a better trending type of stock. Yeah, it, it shows it's maybe a little sloppier that it can do that. But I mean, overall, the 50 days holding all for, uh, but, you know, one one or two days there, I can't even see if the close is below there. But, you know, you want those stocks that trend really well and show that institutional support like NVIDIA. It's just, 
and riding mm-hmm. the 21 EMA the whole way. I mean, that that's mm-hmm. real support. Yeah. There's something really going on with this one. And then you get that blow off in hindsight. It's, uh, you know, not, not unexpected, but in real time, you're, you're back to prior highs. You have this straight, straight up move. Um, you know, I, I put slight odds that it might not, it might not hit and might go back to the 50 day or something. So mm-hmm. uh, the semis were throwing back and you, know, you get something, a quick sell off. And then, you know, now we're back up here after hours, uh, SMH is trading somewhere around there. So yeah, about, yeah. about 137. So just when I thought I was going to get kicked out of this one and all the semis, right. Uh, you know, you get this NVIDIA to, to boost it. And maybe um, maybe I'll have to take some profits into that. We'll have to see what, what it looks like, but um, you know, see if well, everything else starts forming up. And, and can you kind of address real quick because you you mentioned SMH having a position there, Nvidia, um, and, and and a number of sem- semiconductors. So yeah. with your idea of this, you know, this careful concentration, that, that that's a lot of stocks. So yeah. how big are your position sizes in these stocks? Um, are, are you going like basically all in on semis or uh, do you have other things uh, kind of balancing out your no, portfolio? No, I'm trying. I'm trying to do you know coming in uh, from small invested. I'm doing like 10 percent, but you know you add the SMH, you you can get you get pretty fully invested very quickly doing that. You know, mm-hmm. but I'm talking about you put your whole net worth or something like that. Um, you know, depends on what kind of what, what kind of risk tolerance you have. I don't want to tell anyone what to do, but right. you could that that could be your whole account or even on margin because you're you're carefully getting in there. You get four right in a row. Uh, you know, the the first one, the second one, uh, and the third one. You're moving stops. Uh, of course, you, you know, anything could happen. You can gap risk, uh, you know, uh, you have the debt ceiling thing and all that. Something could go wrong. Uh, and then, you know, you're, you're gapped down here and you're, you're in real trouble. But you're carefully getting in at least to adjust your risk as you go with your positions. That's that's the important part. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so are you um, right now, how, how spread out are you into different sectors? Right, right now I'm just basically there with uh, DKNG, and I think that's about it. Uh, not mu- not much, so mm-hmm. pretty concentrated there, but uh, not fully invested because I've been selling the partials and uh, you know making other other slight mistakes too. Like I've been trying to get into Zillow, you know, and every time I buy some turn, you know, I throw I throw it back for you know one or two percent or something like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, there's some little paper cuts here and there. Uh, when your signal changes, of course, you're going to have to adjust. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's we, we had some, some of the I think some of these uh, uh, biotechs set up. So we got something like BMEA, but you can't put your whole account in one of these or even be too big. Right. Like this kind of stuff, you can end up gapping down at 10 bucks, but right. you, know, you get a 30 percent move. And then I'm out here and this is almost that three line strike today. I think this is almost within a penny of taking out a low and then getting some kind of a turn so sort of a cup and then a little handle here so uh, some power and some some biotech so i think you know, everybody's talking about artificial intelligence and ai and i think uh xbi might be a, a play on that also mm-hmm. but i think a lot of the banking issues uh you know biotechs have to raise a lot of money uh so the smaller names are not that safe if they can't raise money you're 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 also kind of describing some some different different patterns here, and um, you you did give the example of the low tight flag. Um, yeah. Do you have any other examples of that, just to kind of um, flesh out exactly what it is that you're looking for and the uh, the, the look of that? Yeah, I mean it, it's just a, something that has a lot of power, like a high tight flag. So Ford was one, but just not quite as much. Yeah, so I mean, it's a, it's a leading stock. It's trading really orderly. Got a little choppy. This looks like a lot of traders uh, playing around with things. And then, uh, you know, I want to see everybody flushed, and then I'm 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 buying it in there. Bought it this day, and uh, you know, I wanted to hold for a bigger move, but this just kind of dropped out. I'm selling some into strength, of course, mm-hmm. uh, but this this had that that kind of power to it. Um, you know. So so Leif, when 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 it kind of emerged initially, kind of within that base. Uh, up to twenty one forty nine. What yeah. would that have been? Another place that you might have been tempted, or or w- would you have looked at that and said, you know, it's probably a little too early. Uh, y- yeah, it's a little early. So part of the low tight flag, it's not a high tight flag, which is three right. to five weeks. You want to see in the flag. So I like to see a little bit of a longer base. Okay. Uh, okay. Interesting. And, and that's the same with the rocket base. It's sort of yeah. stuff I, uh, I'm not trying to invent anything. It's just my observations when I have something. Like BMEA, I just showed. Um, you know, even Riot over here. You probably need to change the, the wrong year. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that's uh, not a good spot there. Obviously, 
<laughs> so yeah, th- this, this one. Looks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so okay. so describe what you mean by rocket base. Well, okay. So it, it had the high tight flag power. This this quick pull, the rise, right, is is yes. uh, over a hundred percent in eight weeks or less. And then the the drop is over twenty five percent. So all I'm looking for is just another base. I'm not inventing anything new. So we just want to see a base coming from that power with uh, less than fifty, you know, less than fifty percent decline. Uh, mm-hmm. after the poll. If, if it mm-hmm. declines less than 50%, I want to see six to 10 weeks. And there were there were some stocks um, 2020 where we did this. Uh, we bought the rocket base, like I think Yela. This Samir reminded me of Yela. He says, look what's back. Something I, if I go back, maybe I go back like 2020. And do this. Maybe I get lucky here. Maybe 20, or maybe 21. 20. Yeah. Then you'll Something see. like oh, it here. Go. I think we yeah. we're buying this one. Yeah, I don't remember where, but this went up a hundred percent in wow. very quickly. Uh, you know, and, th- and then it just all these stocks just went away. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So, gotta, so like gotta, I, I think Yale yeah. is a good, good example of okay, you see this stock going up like a hundred plus percent, yeah. but where especially when you're newer to this, it's easier to. I mean, it's pretty easy to let these things fall off the radar, right? And all of a sudden, they take off again. Like, oh, my God, yeah. that stock that was running up you know, two months ago is taking off again. And I missed it again. How do you kind of stay organized to really track these so you get in at those kind of optimal times? Well, I'm not looking at any of this stuff, really, that is it's not in trend. And I'm using this idea of the Minervini trend template. I'm using the stocks. Right. What that does is sets up stocks in proper bases. The right sides yep. of the bases will be right. Uh, you know, going back here, and you could be very sloppy with your buy points in 2020. And I think I bought Fubo, you know, just on a pullback buy here in a high tight flag. Oh, right. And this went 100% yeah. in five days or something like that. We sold right <laughs> into that. Mm-hmm. So. Well, now when when you have something, and because again, I remember that that, that Fubo move. Um, I think there was there was news happening, you know, and uh, I, I did that have to do with like gambling, uh, maybe. Yeah. As well? well, they were working on a gambling thing. They so, were yeah, working that, on the gambling thing. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. So when when you have something that's news related like that, um, right. how how do you kind of handle that? Because you know, especially with something like that, where uh, it was like, oh, everyone was so excited, and then it just kind of dropped like a rock. <laughs> Well, that's uh, just quickly. where you're, you're, you're taking profits and moving up your stop. And, you know, as it turns around on you, you got to get out, taking out the lows with something like this. Mm-hmm. Um, then we're using your, your basic chart pattern and, and trailing stops. And we're not worrying about the, the news and something like this. I'm looking at the volume really too. You know, you have your, this is your dead volume spot right there. I can just see on the chart based on, you know, from right here. So that's mm-hmm. meaningful on the pullback by, I want to see a kind of low volume area. And this is, you know, it's all very elevated here, you know, from what we're seeing. But for the most part, in a nice, orderly, neat textbook pullback, you're going to have that that low volume spot. And that's when the turn is meaningful, in my view, most of the time, if everything is setting up for the stock and the group looks good. So that's just something to, to think about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, one of the other things I just wanted to kind of address real quick, um, you know, we're covering a lot of charts here today, folks. So uh, <laughs> certainly if you if you are listening to this, you might want to go and check out the video because uh, Leif is, you know, he's he's taking control here. He's marking a lot of stuff up, showing exactly where he's buying these and, and some of these patterns that are a little bit different. Um, so that can always be found at investors.com slash podcast. Um, and then also, Leif, I wanted to give you a, sh- uh, a chance to uh, share where people can follow you uh, as well, because you're you're pretty active on Twitter. And uh, what what are the best ways for people to kind of follow you and kind yeah, of find Twitter, out? Yeah, at Leif Serrata. That's that's my Twitter handle at championteamtrading.com. That's mm-hmm. my uh, website where we we have a group of traders that trade the, these type of setups, basically. Yeah, um, you know, it's trying to swing trade aggressively, looking for powerful stocks, and uh, you know, a, a lot of the energy stocks we're setting up in the last few years and Mm-hmm. We're starting to see the you know riot setting up. This has mm-hmm. some type of a rocket base look to it. It is back in some supply uh, from you know uh, 2022, I think. But mm-hmm. it's got a lot of power. And with Ark Invest up 3.8 percent on a day, when you start seeing those kind of moves, uh, you can get stocks like this to really really go. So mm-hmm. um, you know, I think there's we're, we're starting to transition to maybe a, a bull, but it doesn't mean they can't shake everybody out first. Right. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. they're, they're not going to make it easy. 
but that's why I kind of want to uh, go on a podcast and sort of a uh, say, you know, hey, it, it, if you're interested in this type of stuff, come see me. And um, it's always cool to be invited. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So when we come back, we're going to talk about some more of these stocks. I mean, we've already covered a lot of stocks, but we're going to talk about some more setups that Leif has got on his radar. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, trader. With inflation, interest rates, and the recent banking crisis, are you nervous about what's coming in the stock market? If you're ready to take control of your trading and forecast trends instead of reacting to them, then Vantage Point's artificial intelligence is for you. Did you know Vantage Point's AI predicted the trends of all the collapsing banks weeks in advance? Visit www.freestockcoaching.com to learn how you can predict trends with up to 87.4% proven accuracy. Visit www.freestockcoaching.com. That's www.freestockcoaching.com. Okay, welcome back to the Investing with IBD podcast. It's Justin Nielsen here, your host, along with Arusha Paris, a portfolio manager over at O'Neill Global Advisors, who joins me every week. And our special guest this week is Leif Sereda. He is a 2019 investing champion, U.S. investing champion, and he is also the founder of Championship Team Trading. So um, in this segment, <clears throat> I mean, you've already covered a lot of stocks. So maybe we can start by just acknowledging the fact that a lot of the stocks that are on your radar are stocks that you've already traded and you're just waiting yeah. for a chance to get back in. Oh, for sure. I mean, I'll just jump to Uber real fast. And, you know, Uber is one I, I got in, sell some into strength and, and I'm already stopped out on it. So mm -hmm. if you want to say, hey, well, what, what am I watching? I'm watching this the same stock. I'm getting back in this, uh, watching this round out. You know, if this is the, uh, the, the, the cup, this could be the handle. It's above the 21 EMA. There's nothing really wrong mm -hmm. with it yet. We're going to see if it sets up. I mean, they're going to go back into it and you, you take the little piece and you got to give it back. That's the choppy environment we're in as uh, news driven, uh, you know, choppy environments are. You have to throw them back fast or you can, maybe you have to ride them back down to the 200 day, which is uh, going to be expensive. So, uh, so, so Leif, you know. what, what are you looking for? So, so you got you got stopped out of it. What are you looking for from Uber to do again? Uh, to yeah. make you interested uh, to take another shot at it? Well, it started to kind of pull back on light volume. Yeah. The market got, a lot of the stocks were kind of roaring at the DKNGs. You know, I'm getting some of these to move. All the semis are moving. So I'm getting more comfortable. I have some gains to spend. I can risk it down to the low. But, you know, once everything throws back, I'm adjusting the stops to even uh, because I'm putting too much risk on to, round trip myself on everything. Right. Uh, sometimes you have to get far out there on the risk and, and, and hope they continue. But if they all come back on your head, you're going to, you're going to have to pull the, the emergency brakes on that one uh, yep. like this. And then just have to let it go to the side there, set something tight, and then maybe some kind of a pop on volume. We'll look for that with a 21 EMA support um, mm -hmm. or even 50 day support. Maybe this just needs to set a you know six week base or something with a 50 day catching up however that looks the moving average support is good so you know it, it might improve the, the pattern here and it was a little bit you know straight up on earnings and it's a pretty heavy stock you know you have um 76 billion market cap so it takes a little bit of money to move it around and um, to get back in trend we do need the market otherwise these breakouts aren't going to work very well Mm -hmm. So when the yeah. market comes in, the SMH throws back, and now they've just decided to sort of break out again all at once because of NVIDIA. Um, we're having this uh, uh, kind of wild market on our hands. Yeah. So you mentioned the market cap of uh, Uber being up there at you know $76 billion. Uh, do you have uh, certain liquidity requirements? I know when you were talking about yeah. your Minervi, uh, Minervini trend template, yeah. you, know, you, you put in some extra uh, liquidity and price uh, sure. elements. What, what, what are your typical liquidity yeah, That's I like to see uh, two hundred thousand uh, dollars shares, two hundred thousand share minimum average daily volume, which you can see at the top of the mm -hmm. screen up here. So this is twenty four million. So that mm -hmm. that makes it. And then you want to see, uh, you know, I want to see a billion plus. And in this environment, the smaller is not better. Okay, right. so we want to see. So we're going to prefer the bigger ones, mm -hmm. uh, but you do have to have your minimum requirements. Uh, you know, in great environments in twenty twenty, uh, smaller cap ones, they're going to move like NVIDIA's move in maybe a couple of days, you know? So yeah. that's what I want to see. That's what I'm uh, I'm licking my chops for is just to get maybe some of these banking issues resolved and 
Um, you have the Fed start easing, which may happen in November. Uh, we'll have to see. It's not a prediction. Just at some point, that's probably going to happen. And, uh, you know, get the, the wind in our sails and the small caps. And then you get those stocks like I showed Fubo up 100% in five days and right. real big institutions coming after the smaller names versus hiding out and being chickens in the uh, apples and uh, other ones like that for safety because they, they're not going to have uh, problems raising money. And they'll be around Microsoft. They'll be around uh, most likely Google and such. So those are the ones that are performing now, but um, they have some early signs that it could be switching, but you know, the, we're not there yet. We'll have to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and certainly the recession fears have been, you know, really big on people's minds and this earnings season, I feel like, you know, maybe those got exacerbated a little bit, a lot of attention on the guidance uh, yeah. going forward, a lot of estimates not looking as great. Um, yeah. So maybe we could kind of circle back to your earnings pivots. Uh, and, and you brought up sure. Churchill Downs as, as one example, um, CHDN. Yeah. And so, uh, maybe walk us through exactly what you were looking for on this one and how you, how you got out of it too and what you're maybe waiting for, uh, for right. it to set up again. So for something like this, I thought the group was doing pretty well. Uh, gaming was doing well. And now right. they're all sort of losing the moving averages and such as this sort of, sort of rolls over. But, uh, you know, this was, uh, I guess, they got legalized gaming. They have Kentucky Derby, a few things like that. I'm pulled back buying this in here. And then going into earnings, I have very little cushion. So I'm trying to get out as close to even as possible because uh, I don't want to gamble in case they report something terrible and I'm, I'm down there. So mm -hmm. I'm really buying after earnings. And this would have been an earnings pivot if it, it opened inside and then pushed through here. So Instead the fact that gapped, it was, yeah. Uh, what is your tolerance? So because it gapped up through that, it gapped, um, how... it gapped up about one or two percent higher. I could, I could still buy that. This okay. one just trades a little bit thin uh, from what I was watching in here. So I didn't want to chase anything here. If I hit the buy button, I might be buying up there or something, mm -hmm. um, depending on how it moved. But you know that would have been viable at that point. And, um, you know, the, the strategy is to, to buy that coming out after earnings. So you, you, you get to see the cards, you know, it's like mm -hmm. playing poker and everyone flips their cards and it, it opens inside and comes out the beat and raise a uh, huge guidance. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I did with Melly, um, despite it kind of pulling inside, but the turn, I'll still play it. If I liked what I saw with the numbers, uh, uh, you know, and then the third day, I'm probably just selling out most of it. And to, for people that have the, you know, their longer term investors, you, you know, if, if you want to get a look at the, the future of the company, you save a piece, you know, that's, or, or reattack it, you know, you can just wait for this to base again and then add it back. But what we're doing is we're taking off that into strength and trying to find something else that's breaking out. that's doing the same thing. And that could be, you know, you go to something, we found something like a, like a pen, uh, PN here. This was not the same date or anything, but say this was coming out the next day. And you mm -hmm. see this uh, you know, going into earnings, consolidating and, uh, you know, breaking out there. And we're selling more in the strength up there if that works. And then trying Did to you get have to right. learn that lesson the hard way uh, where where you round trip, like maybe early on in your career, round oh, yeah. tripping some of the stuff. And well, one, one of the things to do, I mean, you really got to sell it all uh, in 2019 when I, when I was uh, doing the, the U.S. investing championship. Mm -hmm. I was running out of time to get any returns. I didn't really have any great returns in the middle of the year. So in the last two months, you have to sell it, book it, and then find another one that you're getting right. You have to get a few right in a row. And yep. that's, that's that careful concentration that, that I was saying. You have to go, say you find a theme that's working, uh, a bunch of growth stocks. Or it could just be all of a sudden you find that growth is breaking out. And all, they're all working. Um, then you have to flip in and out of those. You know, it, it, at your target risk multiples and, and, and uh, percentage gains, if it's 15% in 2019, I'd just take 15% rips and yeah. sell out. So it would be something like this, you know, you're buying at uh, 289 and, and trying to sell out 223 or something. I mean, that, that it's not easy to get the top, but if you get a few right, uh, it, it can it can help your returns, obviously. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and just rin rinse and repeat. <laughs> right. And then, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting into some other ones. You go into BSY. You know, this is, uh, you know, has this sort of VCP look to it. It's marks of VCP is this little slash slash. It's kind of mm -hmm. tightening, but yep. uh, tightening to what? I mean, I don't think this is necessarily a, a supply. And, and just real quickly, issue. just to yeah. identify the term VCP, of course, is volatility, volatility contraction, contraction, contraction pattern. pattern. It's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the, uh, it's just a, I think marks has a characteristics of a, a tight area. So 
mm -hmm. just tight areas are, are just running into earnings sometimes and uh, they're not ready to break out without confirmation that's what it's waiting for so i want to see that earnings pivot i want to see that break out on earnings um th this is just if you buy anywhere in here just gambling in earnings you could be opening down below the 200 day so mm -hmm. uh you know i want to see some earnings some good earnings beat and raise um and then melly so i did hold through earnings after um you know i got back in here and i was holding in some into earnings here but you mm -hmm. have to adjust your sizing because i mean things get crazy on earnings as you can see it, it did kind of right. open higher but it could have opened down here and they you know they could right. have had accounting fraud or who knows i think it's a good company they're reporting good stuff so uh that's what i'm willing to hold into uh, so it's just something to consider is uh, don't get too caught up in just the pattern make sure uh, it's not just flopping around waiting for some catalyst, which is earnings mostly. So it's, I think yeah. the earnings really drive uh, the move. So, mm -hmm. and in terms of your selection, um, are are you are you comfortable with ADRs, the the, the international stocks that are trading on our exchanges? Um, you know, do do you have different requirements there when it's uh, when it's an international stock? So I will go into ADRs on special occasions. So you know, foreign stocks are okay. Uh, but you know, we, we, prefer USA based, you know, NASDAQ and YSC stocks. So, mm -hmm. well, and liquidity. for a while there, I mean, you had a lot of the, the Chinese stocks, you know, that were, that yeah. were doing well, and then they were just thrashed, uh, especially when there was the whole delisting thing yeah. going on. Uh, so yeah, um, I guess that there are sometimes those geopolitical things that you have to deal with. Yeah. I, I, uh, with I don't trade China. I don't trade Chinese stocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and you know for for a lot of people that's fine because there's there's yeah. plenty plenty of fish in the U.S. market uh, to, right. to deal with. Uh, um, yeah, and then um, just to kind of tie a bow on everything here, um, you know, again we're we've been we've been talking about the earnings for Nvidia. We've been talking about a lot of the chips uh, that you have, and um, are there? I, I guess how do you make the decision of okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go a little bit bigger with the ETF SMH, um, mm -hmm. or I'm going to go a little bit bigger with uh, the leaders like Nvidia, or I'm going to start with some of the stocks that are now setting up, like the ASML. So, how do you kind of shift your money between uh, all of those different buckets? I guess. Well, I, I'd always prefer the leaders to an ETF. It's ETF just a quick way to size up and, mm -hmm. and risk manage without you know having that single stock risk. Mm -hmm. uh, choppy environments sometimes they're it's the way to go but you know you get uh, lrcx this was i'm trading very tight you know it's right. through earnings a good rs line kind of low volume right into the buy point um and, and then selling into strength but you know smh kind of a different look to it is you know, kind of hanging out down here for most of that um below the 50 day and then lrcx is on top of the 50 day so i think this is a better a better buy, but you know, it's a, it's that careful concentration. You buy a little here, a little there, you're moving your stop uh, versus just throwing it all in at once and 5% stop your whole account is out. You're out 5%. You can do it for uh, more carefully um, and bet those, uh, the little gains you get along the way. So that's, that's just the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, Leif, uh, it was really great having you on the show this week. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and and we'll definitely, I'm sure, uh, be hearing more from you. Uh, maybe we have to have you on next earnings season to talk a little bit more about these uh, sure. earnings pivots and uh, you know get get through a lot of those. There's so. all kinds of fun to be had with earnings pivots. So <laughs> you have to be um, fast though, because anything can happen. You you know they'll, that's true. You got to be quick. You know, they'll they'll yeah. jump all over the place, perhaps, but and jump away from you like B A N W did, right? I mean that's yep. that one just jumped away from us this morning. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So um, definitely appreciate you sharing that. And again, uh, folks can be, you know, uh, following you on Twitter at Leif Sereda. Tell me the website again. It was champion. It's champion team trading dot com. It's uh, my, my trading platform where we showcase uh, all these ideas and stuff and uh, try to improve and come up with all, you know, all, all the best buy points and, you know, find what's setting up. I mean, that's the yeah. important thing. And, yeah. and, do and be, all the being work. ready. Yeah. Exactly. Doing the homework. 
Yeah. Right. Very good. Well, again, thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Leif, for being hey, on. Thanks for show. having me. It was awesome. Okay. Uh, and that'll wrap it up for us this week. Uh, next week, it's going to be some wee time. Arush and I are going to be uh, looking at the markets and kind of deciding what's uh, what's going on, what's setting up, and uh, how to manage as we continue with the debt ceiling drama, the inflation, recession, and uh, you know the, the Fed raises. So we'll, we'll tackle it all again next week. Thanks a lot for watching us this time. We'll see you next time.